Hey, welcome back to Black Trading. Uh, today we're gonna go over the JPY pairs and uh, USD pairs, mainly um, Aussie. Uh, Aussie as in US dollar and um, AUD and then JP JPY. Uh, so today we got. We're just gonna look at what AUD would. AUD USD has been doing. Um, going for our so for me personally, when I'm going into trading, uh, I always mark out the the rounded numbers. So. Um, right here, we had a big rejection of uh, 0.6, 0.640 on AUD USD, which uh, um, this this mainly happened because there was expected and well there was interest rates um raised uh which causes the us dollar to be stronger than AUD than um aussie dollar which causes this downward pressure on AUD usd um and that's what we're p pretty much seeing right now is that we had um whatever news this was was probably interest rates or whatever we're seeing this move down um and what we should expect next is this continuation down. We've been in this downtrend for a while, um, since December. Um, and if we look at it on the weekly, we've just been going down for a really, really long time. So we should just be expecting like more downward pressure, more bears um, getting involved in AUD, USD, unless they, they rate they they stop raising interest rates then we could see that this push up we could see like um, uh, the bulls come in and the thing with economics and graphs or any market that that it has to be leveled out at some point like it has to be priced in. So if there's big moves down, there's gonna be big moves up because these hedge funds and these big and big banks and stuff, like they will get in. Like this move right here, this 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 wick is huge, massive wick. Um, I don't know, it's a 50 pip wick on AUDSD, it's, it's decent, I'll tell you. And then um, what these banks are doing, these hedge funds, is they get into longs or shorts and they cover the position. So they're expecting things to go down. Um, they'll get into a long in case something like this happens where this price has to be um, mitigated. And then to get out of those, they need to they need to manipulate price back down so they can get out of those longs or the shorts that were covering their original bias position. Um, and now if we go over to the JPY, our JPY pairs, um, like AUD, AUD, JPY has just been going crazy. I don't know what's going on. Um, I had got involved here um i was able to write it out until it came came back down and hit the stop loss and take profit which you know i'm never gonna get mad at i really like this this rejection off this uh the 98 it's it's almost a clear indicator we've been in an upward trend for a really long time like these are moments in markets that you need to be getting involved in I mean, this is an insane move. Like, even if you just waited for confirmation of, for the recent high to be broken, you're catching a 400 pit move. 
which is insane. 400 pips, man. That's a lot of money. If you have a 50K account, if you have a 10K account, I don't care. That's a lot of money to be made right there. Um, this must be meaning that, well, for the fundamental side of this, like we can talk technicals all day long, but the fundamental side of this is that in reality, that AUD is getting stronger than JPY and that's why prices are going up. Same thing with USD JPY. Um, let's take a look at that. No one ever thought, I've been hearing this for a while, no one thought it was gonna, it was gonna break 150. Everyone thought, you know, 150 is like, um, that's where a lot of bears are positioned out of um, short positions bro it's 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 blown through that as you can see um, I got really unlucky on this one move I got stopped out before this dude that's just insane um, for almost a thousand pip move I get stopped out of this 900 pip move which just happens in trading but what you gonna do you know <laughs> how it goes so uh my one big thing for new traders or anything like is to watch overall market sentiment so what i mean by that is jpy pairs us dollar pairs is look at what all okay first let's just you go on the time frames right you're gonna want to go to the one the one day one day one week doesn't matter and you're gonna want to see what the overall moves have been like look at this it's just been bullish. It's just been bullish for a really, really long time. So there's no reason to want to get to any shorts until a fundamental change, is, change happens. Some economic um, change happens, like maybe JPY starts to increase their interest rates higher than what they are, you know? And then same thing with US dollar, like, when you're trading US dollar, you're always gonna wanna look at Dixie. Like Dixie tells you everything you will ever need to know. When Dixie goes up, all these other pairs go down because it's stronger than the correlating currency. And what anyone wants to do is to make the most money off what they invest. So when we know that US dollar is technically getting stronger because it raised interest rates, uh, we're gonna want to get involved when it's at a lower point when it's at a major point more so so when US dollar hits a hundred that is probably a really good time to get involved I mean look how many times it's rejected off a hundred one two three four like four times that's four different times you could have gotten involved into the market and Another, yeah, like right here, inflation, like those are things you all want to keep an eye on. Like sometimes it's actually good inflation. Sometimes in higher inflation is good. It means it's stimulating the economy. Like even though right now, like people say the job market and all these things for the US economy is terrible. It's really not that bad. Right? Okay. Well, it's, it's not the best, right? But this means that like with things with like CPI, consumer price index, that's just a correlation between what people are making and what they can spend. So a higher CPI is good. And that's what you wanna see for a stimulating economy. So if you just see inflation and you see it's high, well, you're gonna to wanna to look at other things like inflation rates, housing markets, um, all these different things to really have a better idea of what kind of strength a currency is having, you know? Uh, the, the US dollar used to be backed by gold and it's not anymore. It's literally just like your faith in US government at this point. So it's, you need to understand these things before you're thinking that USD, U, uh, AUD USD is gonna go up 400 pips. It just doesn't make sense, you know? Uh, and that also depends on your trading style. If you're a scalper, um, swing trade, or you just, you're a day trader. Um, I personally just do, 
I hold trades for four to five days, I wouldn't be in and out. So I guess I'm technically a swing trader. Um, I'd love to go over some of the stocks too. Um, I, have, I have some buddies that do stocks that I think are, are they're doing pretty well. So like with Microsoft, like what you first wanna do is just mark out these round numbers always. So like 370, 380, um, uh, 410, like, if we're looking at Microsoft specifically, like we're having big gaps because Mark, cause we had this huge, um, we're having these big gaps because it's in a consolidation phase. That means like no higher highs are being made, no lower lows are really being made. And that's just something you have, you'll understand the more you trade. It's kind of a Wyckoff accumulation structure. You could say this is a, a spring before an upward move, but especially with stocks, you wanna, you wanna understand how the company is doing. And I know this sounds stupid, but every stock is backed up by a company. So you need to understand the direction of a company is trying to go and what they're trying to do. Uh, we got Google. I don't know what happened with Google, that's crazy. Um, some good ones are like Oracle, Exxon. Exxon is like a decent one to trade. We got Google, I think we just looked at that one. Um, AEP, oh, also these, these companies that really do things with natural gases are great. They go through different cycles and once you understand these cycles and these natural gases, like from seasonal, from a seasonal standpoint, from countries that use the most gases, so like China, India, um, Russia, US, you can have a really good understanding of what markets are going to do because markets aren't just prices. These things are all backed by something, by a reason, by a movement in the real world. There's price manipulation and that's when uh, prices manipulated down so they can get to more to higher to like higher volumes of orders. But the one thing they cannot manipulate is volume. They can manipulate price, but they can't manipulate volume. And when I say they, is we're just saying everyone. Um, companies, hedge funds, US governments, all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have today. Um, key takeaways are, like what I just said, they can manipulate price, but they can't manipulate volume. And we see that in Forex all the time. I am thinking about going into futures at some point. I will make a video on that. I definitely need to be more consistent with this. Um, and I, if you guys don't know what's going on with the Funded Trader, um, I guess they did some like, they redid their, their website. So I know a lot of accounts have been down. My account has been down and it's been a bit frustrating because I feel like I've missed out on a lot of moves. Um, especially these JPY moves, like I've been bullish on this forever. And um, once you have a structure, a structure to your system, once you understand the fundamentals, you can get involved in your technicals in order to make some good money. Like big wicks are, are beautiful. Like that's a very clear indication of price manipulation that cannot stop volume going into the direction it wants to go. Um, so yeah, I mean, I harp on this all the time, like understand the fundamentals and then get involved with your technicals and try to keep a high win rate. Um, and yeah, that's it for today. Thank you.